Good morning and welcome to my Monday messages. I'm Rebecca, for those of you who might be tuning in for the first time. I'm a homeopath, I'm a holistic uh, life coach and I'm an all-round natural health advocate. So just pop in here on a Monday to share um, something, a, a tip, um, a point of view, um, a method, a little simple practice, anything that can help us to become more conscious of whatever is working for us in our lives and maybe some of the things that aren't working so well. And most importantly, being able to change those things if we want to. So today, um, yeah, I, this has come out of a lovely day that I had on Saturday. Um, part of my um, QTT uh, work um, involvement, if you like, is that we have regular practice days. Um, and the the group in Kerry is quite a large group. And we all meet um, a few times a year to spend the morning sharing everything that we've learnt about the methods that we've been taught and um, really uh, upgrading our skills, if you like. Um, and most importantly for us, lucky us, practising on each other. So it's always um, an absolute joy to be with uh, my fellow practitioners and to, to give and receive um, this wonderful method of healing. So what sprang to mind this time was that we were practising an amazing concept, um, which is called mini means. And what this is, and it might be familiar to those of you who are already um, you're already familiar with things like archetypes, um, which is um, uh, a Jungian concept, you know, with the, or it's in the... Um, a lot of the talking therapies understand that we all have kind of characters that we call upon in when we need to. What the mini means are is a much more personal and individual version of those archetypes. So basically, what do I mean? I mean that over the years, we have created these little mini aspects of ourselves in order to help us to, or support us to navigate or negotiate our way through circumstances or situations or relationships, anything at all, um, where we feel for some reason that it's not, um, uh, we're not fully able to be wholly ourselves. So we create these little characters that have almost um, personalities of their of their own. And these characters have enabled us to slip easily subconsciously into behavior patterns that ultimately actually help us to achieve um, something that we want to achieve, whether that's a feeling, um, being able to say something or do something, or most importantly, to feel something that we feel we can't do in any other way. And that becomes um, habitual. We, we don't even know we're doing it half the time. Um, we just slip into a completely different way of being. or And sometimes actually it's so different that we can actually feel that. I don't know whether you ever, you know, find yourself saying something or doing something and then and then feeling oh god that wasn't like me that doesn't feel like me at all that's not something i would usually say or do um so sometimes we can be semi-conscious of those those little characters um they can be triggered by anything anything at all um usually though when we're not really listening to what we need and we've let things get a little bit too far down the line. So what happens is our little mini character comes in and gets whatever we need for us in, in a sort of um, habitual way that's been set up often years ago. Um, so I'll give you a couple of examples. I work with a lot of women with um, menstrual issues 
of of all ages and um they come to me often you know and part of what they're explaining is it could be something like premenstrual tension premenstrual syndrome where um women might explain to me you know i i I kind of turn into someone else. I I turn into this weak, blubbery, poor me, needy, need lots of TLC, lots of hugs, lots of, you know, reassurance. That's just not me at all most of the time, but that's who I am premenstrually. Or they can describe almost the opposite, seemingly, of that little character. Um they say to me, you know, I turn into, in in the words of a dear friend of mine, psycho bitch from hell, you know, that that basically I am so irritable, so impatient, um, snappy. I'm I'm loading all this onto my family, my kids, my partner. Um, I really can't bear anyone to touch me. I just want to be on my own. I can cry because I'm so angry and so frustrated. Um, and, uh, you know, although, you know, I love my family and everything, I, I just need space and I need to be, um, on my own and, and not feeling overwhelmed and underappreciated. It sounds like these two kind of little aspects of women are completely different. What they actually want, I find most of the time it's the same thing. And the reason that they come out in premenstrual times is because that is the time when we are, if we're really listening to ourselves and we're really honouring what our bodies are telling us and what the whole of the natural world tells us, we are meant to slow down, go inside ourselves a bit, just, you know, get lots more sleep, um, eat more food, um, just be mindful of the fact that there are lots of hormonal changes going on inside us. And by and large, we don't do that. We, we don't listen to that um, because everybody around us is saying, oh, you don't want to, you know, don't let periods slow you down. Take a pill. Just carry on in your fast paced, adrenally charged life. Um, and what happens is often in an effort to protect us and to get us what we ultimately really need. These little characters can come out. And if you think about it, the poor me, weepy, um, you know, look after me, do stuff for me, more vulnerable, softer, a bit clingy, all of that. Ultimately, that is getting what that woman needs. That often means that uncharacteristically, they are able to um, ask for help and to accept it. Um, and then when the period's gone and that, you know, that that need is no longer there, then they will come out of it again. Um, sometimes they can get stuck, but that's a different story. That's for another video. Um, and then conversely, the irritable go away. Can you all just F off and leave me on my own? Seems like the reverse. But actually what is needed here is the, the woman needs to be on her own to rest because she's exhausted. So the end result of both characters is actually the same. It's the same in both. Um, and that is that I need to rest. I need to honour what's going on and I need to listen to what I ultimately need. And this is what I have um, habitually learnt gets me that. And that's why it, I do it. So and those two characters can exist within the same woman. And they do, did and do, to a certain extent, within me. Um, one of my characters I got stuck in for years and years, and you may have heard this story before, is um, a part of me that I call my producer myself. And I was a TV producer in a former life. And um, I got stuck in being kind of permanently... Mrs. Bossy Boots, basically, very efficient, very organised, um, very um, do, 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 um, and very, um, yeah, very bossy and dominating. And when I came out of her, 
and realised how unpleasant I had been to live with, both for myself and for all the people around me. Um, I spent a short time kind of beating myself up for for being in her, um, and I didn't like her very much. And then when I came to do the QTT work, I understood that actually she has fantastic skills. And now, if I'm very busy, if I've got to get through a lot of stuff, I will actively call upon my producer to help me to do that because she's really good at getting shit done, basically. Excuse my language. Very useful. The problems come if I forget to step out of her again. And if I stay in her too long, guess what happens? My poor me comes out. Um, it's really funny to watch now because my poor, you know, vulnerable, soft, uh, um, I'm doing everything. No one's doing anything except me and I just need help and support. She will come out now if I haven't stepped out of being producer because I'm heading towards burnout and towards actually being um, rejecting everybody around me if I stay in producer too long. So now my poor me comes out um, to remind me that actually that's enough and I now need to I need to transition back into um, being a bit softer and a bit uh, less bossy. <laughs> so I hope that makes sense. What, what I wanted to do is just give you a couple of examples of, I mean, we've all got hundreds of little mini characters, if not thousands, um, and they are all really valuable. Um, they all have positive intention. They're all trying to achieve something for us that we are denying ourselves for some reason um, or that we're just, you know, unable to uh, recognise that we need at any given time. Um, and then the problem comes often when we are not conscious of that and we end up getting stuck in that particular character. If you think about the, the two examples I've given you, um, even in my own case, you know, staying in producer too long means I'm just too bossy, too dictatorial, too um, in need of, to control everything. Um, and But good in the short term. And the poor me side of me, um, too vulnerable, too needy, um, you know, if it's fine short term, Long term, not so much. Doesn't really, didn't really work for me long term. So what I wanted to encourage this week was for you to think about your own mini means or mini characters, aspects, and, and become a little bit conscious of maybe your top three. Who are the ones that you tend to slip into more often than others? And how are they working for you? What do they ultimately want for you? And when are they triggered to come out? So when we become conscious of that, we can start thinking about, rather than them just appearing out of the blue and without any consciousness on our part, we can actually start to use their skills in a much more conscious way. And most importantly, we can we can review why the need for them, um, you know, comes out in the first place, and whether there's perhaps a different way of achieving the same outcome, perhaps a way that isn't quite so knee jerk, that isn't quite so potentially um, uncomfortable for everybody around us and for ourselves, um, because I often find that if I'm in either one of those um, and I've done it unconsciously, um, it doesn't make me feel that good long term. Um, it's only when I actually feel that I'm in control of, of these characters, that I'm the director, that I can say how long she's on stage and when she needs to get off because it's someone else's turn. Um, that, that feels OK. That feels good. But when these characters are just wandering in, you know, on stage and off stage at will, 
Um, it's like there's no one driving driving the bus or no one directing the show. So that's what I wanted to just give you a message about today. Um, it's something that helped me enormously to actually gather all these characters in and to include them and, and value them as part of who I am um, and always be able to um, to call them, call upon them when I need them and soothe them when they, they need soothing because sometimes there are actually better ways, um, more um, whole ways for me to achieve the same thing. And some of the, the characters hardly ever come out now and some of them I can see them coming. <laughs> so that's useful too. So I hope that makes sense. Do let me know um, and do share if you identify a, a little mini part of you that you find really helpful um, or that you've never thought of before, but now you think about her, she's really helpful. Do share in the comments below. I'd love to hear and have a wonderful week as ever. Um, enjoy this glorious late autumn weather that we're having. It's just fabulous. And yeah, wishing you lots of love for the week.